I imagine, you know, like I'm in a shoebox. I think of that, that I'm in a shoebox. I'm in the dermatologist's shoebox. Actually, it's the Wake Forest University uh, dermatology shoebox. And there's walls. There's things I don't see about people in other groups. Things I don't know about the family doctors or about my patients. And being in this box, uh, the walls of this box that I'm in limit my ability to know what's going on in other groups. It makes the stuff I do see in other groups not necessarily representative. And the people in my box have a way of viewing the world that may not be the same as the way people in another box view the world. And I'm going to talk about how these different these factors, these three factors, the things you don't see about other people, the things you do see that aren't representative, and how your group has a way of looking at the world affects our decision makings, affects uh, how we understand other people. Being in dermatology, I take care of a lot of patients with inflammatory skin diseases. I'm the expert on psoriasis. You know, I treat people with topical cortisone medicines all the time. And what I was taught by my professor when I was in training at Duke and Chapel Hill, both places, was that these cortisone medicines are great, but the more you use them, the less they work. Something we call tachyphylaxis. You know, they, they work fine at first, but gradually the body becomes resistant, they stop working. And for 10 years, that's what I taught the residents at Wake Forest. Then we did a study. We gave 30 psoriasis patients medication to apply twice a day. Um, here's each day of this eight-week study. Uh, here's their use of the medicine on each day. Uh, the blue dots being what they said they did in their treatment diaries. And the pink dots being the average for the group of 30 patients and what they actually did according to the computer chips. And you'll notice that uh, those two lines aren't the same, OK? Yeah. And that the use of the medicine is dropping rather steadily. I mean, the data's a little noisy. It's dropping steadily at a rate of about 20% every five weeks. So what does that mean? In 25 weeks, the compliance should go to zero. So in about six months, the compliance should go to zero. I now have a term for this. I call this tachyphylaxis. That it was when, what they taught me that the, the more you use the steroids, the less they work isn't true. What's actually happening is the less you use the steroids, the less they work. <laughs> the neat thing about this is that we had geniuses teaching us this stuff. <laughs> professors, professors of dermatology, you know, who were the most caring, thoughtful, brightest people you could hope to find. And what they were teaching was backwards, was completely and utterly wrong. And it wasn't because they were uncaring, and it wasn't because they were stupid. But they were making assumptions about people in another group. They didn't have this window on what was happening in the other compartment. And when you, when you learn from people in your compartment what's going on in another compartment, you can get some really, really warped ideas. You know, our view of Muslims, you know, is, uh, you know, American view of Muslims is based on stuff like this, you know, um, and, and this and this, you know? Muslims killing Jews and Muslims terrorizing people. This is not representative of what Muslims are really like. When you got 1.3 billion Muslims going to the mosque praying for peace every day, you don't see any of those. You just hear about the stuff that is as unrepresentative of them as this stuff is of us. And it's kind of cool. The way compartments can give you a really strange idea of what other people are like. So don't jump to conclusions about other folks being evil or mean-spirited. Generally speaking, people are really good caring folks across the world, across medical specialties. We doctors, there's a strong tendency to think, well, we know we're doing our best for patients. The American medical system wouldn't have a problem if it weren't the just darn insurers who only care about the money, you know, and the evil drug companies who only care about the money. That's all they're in it for. But once you understand the thinking about compartments, you can imagine yourself being in that, working at the insurance company. And I know now what they think about when they go to bed at night. Those people think, you know, I spend all day working to, for, to, to make sure that patients have access to the best health care that the world has ever seen. And we wouldn't have a problem if it weren't for greedy doctors and evil drug companies. 
And I'll bet you the people at the drug companies, they go to bed at night thinking, God, we spend billions of dollars investing in research, and we take all this risk, and we actually create these new drugs that is what actually improves people's lives. And we wouldn't have a problem if it weren't for the insurance companies who only care about the money. And then there's the lawyers. Okay. <laughs> um, I, 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 don't, I, I know I say some goofy things, but I'm going to really stretch my credibility here. Even the malpractice attorneys aren't evil folks. Let's just imagine we were in their box, all right? And so we're sitting in their office. We're sitting at their desk. Client, potential client comes in the office. What is the probability that that client says, I have a good doctor who's, who's really caring and expert and does a good job? <laughs> zero. That's zero. They see patient after patient who comes in who says, I was butchered. I saw a bad apple. This doctor is terrible. You know? Now, Whatever doctor that person saw, almost undoubtedly, 999 of their 1,000 patients loved their doctor, was totally happy with the care. That one in 1,000 goes to the malpractice attorney. The malpractice attorney thinks that, gosh, these, there's all these bad apple doctors out there. I no longer believe there's all these bad doctors. I mean, I went to medical school. There were, you know, 100 odd people in my class. And if you saw the worst of them, you saw a great doctor. They, I mean, they were all committed to being great physicians. They, were, they all did great in high school to get into good colleges. They all did fabulously well in college to get into medical school. They all were amazing people. That's, that's what American doctors are like. You can, there's a, a beautiful symmetry to the world and to these different compartments that we're in. So again, there's things we don't see. There's things we see that are just totally unrepresentative. And then the context we bring to things affects our perceptions. To get past it, I would strongly encourage you, you know, you need windows on the other compartments. The best thing you could possibly do is go and talk to folks in the other compartment.